Bienvenido, Fede. Eh, gracias. Al Language is a Virus número 46, creo, ¿no? Oh, oh, oh. <risa> <risa> Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to tattoo it. <risa> Hi everyone, uh, and welcome to this new session with uh, Federico Eisner. Uh, before we start, we we want to send uh, our love to to a friend. Um, I'll, I'll show you um, uh, a poet and colleague from us in Chile, uh, Jorge Polanco, who has been uh, who is living a, a difficult moment right now. He he wrote his. Uh, PhD dissertation about the work of Juan Luis Martinez. Uh, some of you know it, it's probably the, the most uh, important poet in the experimental tradition of Chile. And Jorge is a very important specialist in, in his work. Uh, in, in year 2019, he published uh, this book. This is the, the book called Juan Luis Martinez, Poeta Apocalyptico which is basically the, an essay, uh, which is the, the text uh, adapted from his uh, dissertation. And also the publishing house uh, decided to include some images of Juan Luis Martinez's work because most of uh, Juan Luis Martinez's work is, um, uh, is visual, is kind of visual poetry. The problem was that, um, uh, that the, the publishing house from Universidad del Paraíso, they ask uh, for the rights of uh, a small quantity of uh, images, but later they, they put like 130 pages of uh, Juan Luis Martinez's work. So this is kind of a, a two books in one, an essay and an anthology that wasn't authorized by the family of the author. There, there's a, there is a uh, a foundation, uh, Fundación Juan Luis Martínez, which is in charge of the rights uh, of the work of Juan Luis Martínez. And uh, the, the book was available in bookstores for like two or three days. Uh, happily, I, I could grab some of, uh, of the books. Uh, and it's a wonderful essay. Uh, but uh, the, the, the foundation uh, sued the, the publishing house and uh, they had to retire the books. And there, there was a, uh, I don't know, Mar Martin Gavis can help me, uh, una demanda civil, como se dice? No se escucha. Our expert uh, lawyer. Civil lawsuit? Yeah, a civil lawsuit uh, against the public. Also a criminal. Yeah, and now, Exactly, and that was like one, one, one and a half years ago. The, the book disappeared, uh, it's, it's, no, it's not available right now. Uh, but uh, this Monday, uh, Jorge Polanco told uh, in social media that he was called by the detectives from Chile because there was a criminal lawsuit against him as the author of the, of the book. Of course, there, there are lots of, uh, problems involved indeed. There's a, pro a problem with the rights of the images uh, and, and especially because some of the images were adapted or, or, or they have a different layout from the uh, original book, which is complicated, of course. But uh, Jorge, the only thing that he did was to write a wonderful essay about Juan Luis Martinez and he's not the responsible or, uh, or, or for the rights and the action of the publishing house. And now he, he has been menaced, uh, threatened to, to spend like 1,000 years in jail and pay, I don't know how, what much money. We all, of course, wish that uh, this won't happen. And it's very sad to know that the work of a poet, which is really, really important for us in Chile, uh, is related to these kind of actions. I mean, uh, this is really serious. We are very sad, all the people that are around uh, uh, in the academy, the poets, the, the editors, etc. And we really hope that the, this can be solved. Uh, none of us wants that the legitimate fight for the, for the work of an, of an author implies that another one has to go to jail. Of course, it's, it's really absurd. So we just wanted to, 
send our love to Jorge Pia uh, Sommer uh, here. She's a very good friend of him, and I'm, I'm sure she, she will tell him that we are uh, we are supporting him and and hoping that the, this uh, will be solved. In the meantime, I hope you can uh, read about Juan Luis Martinez. Uh, as I said, he's a wonderful, wonderful poet. He died like uh, almost 30 years ago. He has nothing to do, but uh, it's very sad that his work is related to all these uh, discussions. So that was a, a very brief announce uh, that I wanted to say because uh, lots of us know uh, Jorge and we really hope that this can be solved. And now uh, we say hi to Federico Eisner from Uruguay slash Chile. Uh, uh, well, uh, lots of you know him. He has been participating a lot in, in this series. Uh, Federico is probably the most interdisciplinary person I know. Uh, uh, everyone, every one of us here uh, has lots of talents, but uh, in the case of Federico, is I think more uh, more expanded. Even uh, he has studied uh, uh, chemistry, but he has worked also related to uh, preservation of uh, of um, uh, art. Uh, he's a writer. He's a musician. He has written uh, poetry, but also fiction. Uh, he has played in musical groups with, uh, for example, Uruguayan uh, kind of traditional uh, uh, music from, from that wood. But he has also played in lots of musical projects. And also he's the founder of uh, Orquesta de Poetas, uh, uh, the Orchestra of Poets uh, project in, in which some of us have have been involved. Uh, he, I saw also here Pablo Fante, which is a very active part of Orquesta de Poetas. I also had the luck to participate in the first years. Uh, Martin Gavis has collaborated lots of times. With Bravo also, uh, he, he recorded a, 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 a wonderful, uh, I, I, I was about to say CD, but then <laughs> the CD don't <laughs> <laughs> a record. <laughs> with Juan Ángel Italiano and Orquesta de Poetas. Um, and uh, to, wrap, to wrap it up also, uh, Federico, uh, he's uh, studying a PhD right now in arts in the uh, Universidad Católica de Chile. And he's um, researching and writing his dissertation exactly about uh, the issues that are part of our, our interest here in languages of Iberos. Uh, Part of the poets that are studied in, in his work are Luis Bravo and Pia Sommer. And we hope that they, they won't uh, put a criminal lawsuit <laughs> against you after you finish the, the dissertation, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> so you have, to, you have to write only good things about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm so, well, very welcome, uh, Fede. It's great to see you again, and please delight us. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. It's a pleasure uh, to be, and, and and it's been a pleasure being part of this group for many months. Although I'm not every Wednesday, but uh, it's been a, a great journey, and I hope it lasts a lot more. Um, and I prepared some things to show you, and. And something, something to read you because uh, I was, I was uh, writing. I am writing all, all the time, of course, but I'm writing a kind of a paper or something like that because I am in this moment at the academy. <sighs> Whatever it, it does, it does <laughs> mean. But um, and I was writing uh, precisely in English something that I, I, I will take advantage of that um, it's not it's not really long it's a, like a page and a half I promise um, but I think that it summarizes a lot of thinking I have in this period in which I have uh, dedicated to to some poetry um, the, 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 the things 
before that, the things that I, I want to talk now with you is not like uh, the, 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 the much uh, more. Oh, oh. Are, are you hearing me? Yeah. Okay. It was lost for a second. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me know. Let me know. Um, I, I think this is a place much more freer and and and, and safe also than academy <laughs> to talk uh, whatever our our uh, uh, feelings and 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 our desires about this uh, this kind of poetry uh, means for us. Uh, one thing I I want to to start is that as Felipe says I, I, I don't know if I'm that interdisciplinary I, I don't know what is that I think that is an abused word but anyway uh, I, I do several things besides I have the, 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 the bad um, habit of uh, producing things uh, as a skill as a talent uh, but uh, also as a dam. Uh, so uh, I I also work for the with uh, the, with Martin and 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 Gonzalo Enriquez with, uh, for the Festival PM Festival uh, Music and Poetry Festival, which we talk about when Cecilia Vicuña was here in Language of the Virus. If you remember, we were like launching the 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 label. Uh, Discos PM, right? Which is the side project of uh, Festival PM. The good news uh, of the record, but good news is that Festival PM is going to be, uh, it's going to have the 21, the, the fourth version in, in this year. So we, we, know, we knew this like 10 years ago, 10 days ago. Um, That's but, great news. Yeah, and yeah. In, yeah. In a real uh, or in, I mean, in a virtual format or whatever. All, all, all is mixed now. So okay. all is, yeah. yeah. We don't know. We we are not working like hard yet, but we are beginning. But it's it's gonna be, of course, streamed, like and the, the most professional stream uh, and that we can do with our resources. Um, and one of the the the, the great battles of, of my life is how to balance the hours of my day, and I think that for many of you, it's the same. I'm not. I I don't feel unique in that sense. Um, but indeed, I have like I I've been years in a in in a laboratory, asking myself what do I do here. I mean, and until like I left it, uh, yeah. It was a wonderful work. I was I was working with paintings, historical paintings, and and, and but it it was so good that I I I live it. Like, um, and and the, in in but that question it doesn't end when I left that job or uh, get in the in the in the phd for for example that question like it's going it's it, it go with me like forever and and one of the things that i was wondering is do do, do we create through our through our others no do we create when we produce a festival do we? I, I'm trying to expand a little bit the the, the appropriationist uh, question. I mean, of course, uh, I have like here this book now. Some of you might uh, know know it, the unoriginal genius of Marjorie Perloff. I mean, uh, when uh, the appropriation is is not nothing new, but how many ways of of creating and, and feeling like creative uh, can we can we have you know? 
And the, the thing is, is that uh, my my work is it's been um, like most really most of it like col uh, col collective collaborative in some way or another. I have like uh, a couple of books in poetry and, and, and narrative like could be said my, but all the rest, my, my records um, in which I, I have played or uh, other kind of uh, sound uh, products and, or, or poetry pro uh, publishing, uh, publications are uh, really collective and, and sometimes I wonder if I am not like living behind my persona, you know, uh, we are artists uh, at the end of the day, and and I I wonder if I should make my like FedericoEisner.cl uh, web page. You know? That doesn't exist. I I I couldn't know what to put in there. Actually, you know, it's like many things that. It's not completely me, but of course it's me too. And also I, yeah, I, I, I wonder which does it means about me. Anyway, I work in that way. I work with people and I think that's also a pleasure. I, 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 something that I want to do. And in this moment, I, of course, I have worked with the Orquesta de Poeta for 10 years. We are like in April, we are getting the 10 year anniversary, 10th anniversary, which is really weird. I, I always say that I, I, tried, I tried in the past, in my musical past to make it, like go to the radio, to the television and nothing work, making like conventional, pop and rock music and with Orquesta Poeta which is the the the, the strangest the stranger uh, strangest work that I made I, I have made many more things and I, I feel like much more uh, complete um, I, I will show you something of Orquesta Poeta actually with Luis uh, I, I selected some uh, all live uh, performance or, or video performances, um, and and I show you later what I'm doing uh, in my thesis for my thesis. I'm getting to the trying to get into the end of my PhD, and which is something with uh, Luis and something with uh, Pia Sommer which are my two collaborators uh, of, of my investigation, and I'm infinitely grateful about it. Um, and um, I wanna, after maybe a couple of examples, I wanna read you the, that page and a half that I, I told you, right? So I will show you first the, the uh, Orquesta de Poetas video. Mm -hmm. Desktop and no, this is not sorry. Here, um, yeah, this is an improvisation. I can tell you more later. Are you hearing and watching? Not no? so loud, maybe. Maybe met just you your voice. Know. Okay, 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 no. Uh, no, I think that the... Suena un poco, igual se escuchaba, pero suena un poco. Y también ven el origen del sonido. 
uh, with with sound. So I already, yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Camarero, ¿cuánto cuesta cada costa corporal? Cada kiss, 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 cosa, cada cosón colosal, cada cuesta, cada cresta, cada, cada conflictual, cada, cada, cada cura, cada conje, con que cal, cada copla, cada culpa, cada queja coloquial, fin de bebé, cada, cada, Apagar un gallo como un incendio, cegar mares como trigales, desangrar campanas como corderos, Ojo árbol, ojo pájaro, ojo río, ojo montaña, ojo mar, ojo luna. De encastillamiento, que como qué, como con cal, que comezón, caminan, caminón, caminador, cubre campos, campeador, capeador, cocoroco, compañero, camarada, comensal, como tal, Molino de envenenamiento, molino de acuerdo. ¿Te perdimos el sonido? Gracias. Fede, ¿dónde estás? Federico está con problemas, problemas técnicos. Sí. Rellena, Martín, rellena. <risa> Cortina musical. Cortina musical. <risa> We're going to uh, commercials. <risa> Vamos a comenzar. <risa> Did you listen the sound of, of Martha? With, uh... Sorry, are you hearing me? Yes. <risa> You're having an abduct abduction of Where yeah, it's well, like I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you put, if you put it again, but what do you think? You continue or? Hey. Sorry for that. But you become now in another mood with another coughing and what happened in between? <laughs> 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 Temporía. Lajú. 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 Camarero, ¿cuánto cuesta cada costa? ¿Cómo cuán calladitos que callados? Cada igual, cuán contritos cada uno. Cariserio, cariserio, cariru. Ranz. De sentar tu plumar. Una bandera como un gallo. Apagar un gallo como un incendio. Bogar incendios como en mares. Cada, 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 cura. Cada con que con cal, cada copla, cada culpa, cada queja. Molino del descubrimiento, molino del escurrimiento, molino del remordimiento, molino del quebra 
Juan también. Molino del despeñamiento. Molino del envejecimiento. Molino del encarecimiento. Soñoliento. Molino macilento. Molino soñoliento. O betata tu tatata. Ay, aya, aya, ia, ia, tralali, lali, lala. Molino chiquiento. This is uh, the, the the part of the album we made in Montevideo in one morning, um, like six hours of, uh, or in one day of a studio. We made uh, the whole album with uh, Luis and, Luis and Juan Angel Italiano when we were assisting to the Mundial Poetico de Montevideo, which is a grand eloquent name, of course, for a festival. Um, and this is uh, the the only improvisation that we made for the this record, uh, based on of course Ursonate uh, in an Uruguayan uh, modernist uh, writer Juan Cunha. Uh, I don't remember the name of the of the book, Luis. If you can tell me, um, and and the Widobro play, Luis. Yeah, it's based on three texts, yeah. and 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 the play of Widobro, how is it, is the it's a theater play of Widobro? Anyway, from, I, it's from a long, a long poem from Juan Cunha, yeah, that uh, it goes through the alphabet, mm -hmm. from the A to the C, to Sita, and we we took just a fragment. I don't remember which letter or sound. Yeah, with freedom. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and this is an, an, an album that, that we are really like proud of, uh, that we could made it in a in few hours and with uh, a nice result. It's uh, available for free download or in the, in the platforms for for, for streaming, uh, and uh, the album is called El Rose de las Voces, which is like uh, in English, um, voices, uh, how do you say rose, uh, rose, um, friction? Yeah. Huh? Something like that? The friction of voices or something like that. Um, well, b before that, it, it I, I will read to you uh, this uh, thing that I prepared before uh, it gets later. So then we can see or, 
or, or talk about, uh, watch the other examples or, or talk about what the ideas that I, I said. I will share the, the text with you because it will be easier for everyone for me to read it and for you to understand it, I think. And this, this one, yeah. Are you seeing vocal centrality? Yeah. Okay. Um, then I, I, I'm making investigation or research in, in poetry and music since my, my master, that, but in that moment I, I didn't work with sound poetry and I didn't, I, I say that we are before the, before sound poetry in the Orquesta de Poetas, okay? But in this, uh, in this research, which is a practice, artistic practice research, I wanted to work with sound poetry and, and to get in deep into it, into it. So this is part of what the things I, I say is not that long, okay. I propose that uh, creating music with sound poetry is always to work on and with the vocal practices of particular sound poets. In my approach, sound poetry is always a vocal practice, even in the limits of post-human or over-processed voices. However, it must be said that vocal centrality in sound poetry is not a universal consensus. For Steve McCaffrey, since the tape recorder appeared, Voice is a starting point for sound poetry, but it is not always where it ends because its electroacoustic processing may produce an oral experience that expands our creative our, and reception possibilities. On the other hand, for the Keynes, that sound poetry deals with human communication and its means, always presenting a semantics, also a negative one, and it is specifically and it is speci specifically situated. The four Higgins concern is more about challenging language than about the concept of, concept of voice itself. Although the centrality of voice for some poetry is arguable, I posit that, that in order to relate it to musical creation, we have to look for the practices of some poets working and thinking on their own vocal art. These practices, to some extent, overlap with the field of extended vocal techniques, or EVTs, shared with experimental music and theater. Artists like, such as John La Barbara uh, in experimental singing and electronics, Meredith Monk, exper experimental acting and singing, or Jean Plonk, uh, more known for us, of course, some poet and vocal performer have not only collaborated between them and many others, but also have put in dialogue their political search through vocal practices and the configuration of what Larry Wendt has called the vocal neighborhood. To understand the political aspects behind EBTs, uh, it's also to understand why voice studies have exponentially increased their activity in the last 15 years Egoin, uh, Marta Feldman, and many other colleagues, the question uh, remains open, open why, why voice now? Groundbreaking books in the mid 2000s uh, probably started the, this gross, growing activity being two of the more gravitating for more than one voice by uh, feminist philosopher Adriana Cabarero and uh, a voice and nothing more by psychoanalytic philosopher Mladen Dolar. In some sense, these two authors present opposite postulates. For Cabarero, what it, the voice, communicates is precisely the true, vital, and perceptible uni uniqueness of the one who emits it. While for Dollar, the voice is a charismatic and never corresponds completely with, the with its source, meaning a body. Nevertheless, as divergent as they seem to be, both authors and many others agree in deconstructing the dependence of voice with, with uh, discourse, the logocentric logic established through our centers. 
the political relevance of vocal practices and voice studies that the voice seems to be a chimeric object subject agent that forces us to wonder about the bigger challenges of our age, such, uh, such as communication, presence, disembodiment, and medialization, with a subtlety, subtlety that is reached only by very few current phenomena. Since there seems not to be an unique, but neither an acousmatic voice, I, ha I have preferred to think in terms of vocal practices. Hence, in the prosody of and sound complexity of a vocal practice, practice is where more information and deductions can be made for a creative work. Consequently, I will focus on the modes and uses of particular voice in time as well as in its harmonic series or timbre. Although not in a comparative, comparative vis identificatory or forensic aim, but in a creative and self-contained way. If the voice is that ubiquitous, ungraspable phenomenon that can never be fully understood, understood or embodied, alternatively, a vocal practice is actually situated as what Lisa Massey and Alicia Jackson have called an agentic assemblage. This idea comprehends that voice is one part of an assemblage that uh, include, includes uh, multiple heterogeneous elements, objects, discursive signs, utterances, bodies, and more things, of course, all exist on different temporal and spatial scales that work collectively to produce a territory. This vocal territory or neighborhood in Larry Wendt's terms is here um, thought as a tradition that involves not solely the emissary subject and listener collaborator, collaborator diets, but also subjects, biographies, or uh, subjects, biographies, artistic circles, in which they are developed uh, recording mediation, and especially in the case of some poetry, the persistence of some kind of notated textual origin for the vocal practices, which is an idea of, that Felix has uh, proposed. So, sorry about the length of the commentary, but uh, in, in this paragraph are part of the, the things that, I, that I'm thinking now, because I, I, for this project, I said that voice is the is the non uh, is, is something that we have to think yet for understanding the, the relation between music and poetry, which historically has been thought in terms of uh, textual uh, or structural uh, relationships. I think that uh, that is not the case for some poetry. And, and of course, uh, thinking about boys, uh, it has to take you to the, to the, the ontological uh, question about what, what is voice. And I, I'm still reading, of course, but uh, of course, there's, there's not a, an answer. And so I, I prefer, that's why I prefer to talk about vocal practices. That's something that you can grasp more than voice, uh, which is something too philosophical, too uh, physical or acoustic or too whatever, because many fields and mainly, I mean, all of human activity mostly have to do with voice. So um, this is too much, but I think that vocal practices uh, or artistic vocal practices is something that we can like uh, talk about in, in, with some parameters. Uh, and then I'm doing some analysis of uh, some poems of uh, Luis and P.S. And in, in, in base of that analysis, which is not only acoustic, but also like interviews in, in 
<clears throat> discourse analysis. Um, I, I'm working in new musical or sounding ideas for this sound poetry uh, that it already exists, of course, which is also something that we could discuss anyway. So if, I don't know if some, someone has something to, to say or, or we can go to the, some example anyway. Maybe you could put a, another example to know, to put in context with what you just said, and then we can open the, the, the discussion. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I will show you um, Pia, Pia's example. Um, no, 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 no. I will show this. It's completely new. And uh, here it is. Arratalam no sava 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 sa 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 sa
That's great. Uh, I, I, I wanted to ask you, um, uh, Fede, um, a little more about the methodology of, of this research you, you are making. Because uh, in Chile, I think there's only one PhD program which uh, allows to, to develop a practice as a research uh, methodology, which you are, uh, which you are uh, developing right now. Uh, and in fact, uh, usually the, the writing of a thesis is a very individual work and, and it's great to see that in, in this case, of course, it's individual, but uh, it's related to the work with other artists. So if, if, if you can please tell us a little more about it uh, in difference from, I mean, writing a, a, a dissertation only from a theoretical point of view. Can you hear me? Please, a little louder. No. Yes. Yeah. I... Sorry. Sorry, one minute. I have a problem. No, I don't know what. Ahora sí. Sí. Sí, mejor. No. There's a problem with the interface. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's a 
that's an issue. I have uh, this is a, a new program in Chile. I mean, the, in the States, North America, and Europe, the artistic research is it has more than twenty years, and many and many programs. But here in Chile, it's really new in Latin America, and and it's it's not easy to to deal with with the with the with the demands of the of the program of the department of, of the academic thing the academic writing for instance mm -hmm. uh, it's not easy to to go through a, a more poetic if you want uh, writing about the process for for instance they they hope always some part of a report uh, and with the, with some scientific uh, way of of uh, of compare the knowledge with some reference and and the, the most part of the, the knowledge that you acquire in this process is, is not uh, comparative. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's not only that it's, it's not a problem of being scientific or, or, or not. I, I think that that problem, I don't mind it any, anyway. Any, any, but um, but you not, you you can't compare it. You, you maybe could take could have like conclusions or uh, or, or something to say, uh, which could be inspiring for other processes for other people uh, uh, about how to deal with some kind of uh, experiment uh, experiment. Tall collaborations, for for instance, uh, uh, which is uh, we, we, there are so, there's a lot of projects in that in that uh, uh, path. I'm, I'm interested now in in the idea that I mentioned briefly in the text about the agentic agentic assemblage of uh, to understand the voice, some like something more. Um, like an assemblage, which is a delusion idea. Uh, this the same author. Uh, she talks about uh, the um, voice without without organs, mm. uh, uh, like adapting the the term of uh, Teresa and Guattari, and and thinking in in the voice of something that. It's not only in you or the producer, and not only in me, the receiver, uh, but it's also in in the in the materia, in the materials, mm. and in, and that's not only comprehend the air between us, uh, comprehend that of course the technology, we are an example of that. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, the, 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 the all the notions that we have about materials, the ocean, notions that we have about, about flesh, for instance, uh, and, and our bodies, and and also uh, this is more interesting. Also, I think that they they talk about this is not necessarily like synchronous. Uh, could be in different times the collaboration. The, the, I mean, the voice could occur in in different times, and I extend that idea to collaborations too. That you can collaborate also uh, artistically in 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 so many ways, uh, and and that I I like recycle with what I say at the beginning. Now, what kind of uh, pers persona artistica am I? In this color collaborative problem uh, of of that everything is is with others, mm. and and I work with voice now because vo voice is for me a, a a problem in my life. I mean, I sing bad. I I can I can sing, uh, and this a kind of trauma um, that. I know that I'm not the only one, neither, of course. Um, but I'm trying. But I, I think that all this, uh, all this research, also helps me to leave it behind. 
it doesn't care that much. I, I, am I trying to de deconstruct in some way uh, the, 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 the more structuralist uh, thinking of, of music? Well, I have to deconstruct also the, the that uh, like the well-tempered uh, vision of voice. Mm. Um, but you asked me about methodologies, and uh, and I I, I I answered you about the difficulties of talking about these things in 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 the academic writing. Mm. Uh, that's an issue. At, at least in this moment for me. Yeah. Yeah, and also there's a lack of a, like a, a the, the, there's a lack of other researchers that that are are the same time artists that can evaluate and engage your work. Yeah. That's also that's not a uh, massa critica, <laughs> so that that's complicated too. Also, I mean, uh, it's very alone in that way that that kind of work. Uh, in in Chile, also as in many countries, I think uh, there's a big uh, separation between the 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 academic research and other kinds of research or artistic. Uh, research that uh, aren't still allowed in the in the academy and that PhD program is the, is the first one but at the same time if, uh, if for example uh, a professor from that uh, same program uh, if he or she applies to, to a research program uh, with a, a fundings by the government uh, they can't propose to make an artistic work they mm. just have to publish the, a paper in a in an academic journal. So, the the limits of the of what you can do with the research are still very very narrow, and, and it's very sad, of course. I mean, uh, all of us here, I think, uh, know that the, a research can end up in a in a in a exhibition, in a record, in an essay, in a documentary. I mean. And also a book, uh, uh, a paper, whatever. I mean, it's uh, there are lots of possibilities. So, so it's very sad that when you finally uh, are done with your research, it ends up only in a in a paper. I mean, in, we do all kinds of, of stuff anyway, but 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 that is very complicated. I think. Mm. Yeah. Pl please, anyone can join the. What wants to join the conversation? I really enjoyed um, hearing that um, that last piece with uh, with with Pia uh, and um, mm. and, I, and I was thinking how interesting that your research is all about the so it's, yeah the centrality of the voice yep. but actually what was interesting there was this the dialogue between the voice and the guitar and what else were you doing some processing of sound i mean mm. it was um when you were talking before about that sort of collaborative role that mm. interests you and that space you were making with sounds around the voice um yeah that was really um really fascinating um so you know so why are you focusing on the 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 voice when actually you have these real interests in what happens around the voice oh okay good question of course uh, i i i focus on the voice on the voice centrality as an analytic lens mm. For begin for the beginning, I mean to begin my my research, like to say, I, I'm going to work with some poetry, and the lens will be that the voice is is central there, to 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 like to arrive to, in in music. Mm -hmm. I I know that that's not the only lens that you can use, but it's the one that I was interested 
in. And, and some of the, of the problems here in, in, in artistic research it, is that, uh, and, many, uh, and many researchers are, don't like it, is that you, could, you can choose what, what, what is your interest. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 it, and you don't have to argue, it, like, mm -hmm. it, this is more important or this is, no, okay, I, I, I will give some reasons, but this is what I want to talk about. I wanted to focus on voice. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's a, another relationships between some poetry and music, of course. But I wanted to focus on voice to analyze the sub, the some poetry of my collaborators and to get ideas. A, a, anyway, I working in I'm working in two modes, which I call the uh, electroacoustic interventions and the performative. This one that I showed you is, is the performative, where I play uh, al along and, and and with the song poets in a kind of improvisational way with some things uh, previously told. Uh, but in the other case, I work uh, di directly, like acoustically, electroacoustically, over some poets already fixed. Uh, so um, in that case, I only use the voice as a source and nothing more. Mm. Um, and I think that that there is more uh, maybe uh, about only about voice, but uh, I I wanted to show the the to, for today the live uh, examples because it, I think it's more easy to follow. But uh, anyway, I have of course the other. But it, yeah, it's really it's really interesting. I mean, I suppose um, you know in the UK it's it's different. I mean, we our creative practice research is is really well. Um, established and yeah. um, and i mean it, what i'm hearing in in what you're doing that there's a, actually a really powerful argument for the thing that you're doing that isn't central that you're that when you're talking about um the um I said, yeah, you're, you're particularly your interest in collaboration or, yeah, or working around the voice or working with the voice. It seems, um, you know, is it, is it, in a way, you, you are the centre of what you do and what you do is something that is kind of purposefully um, complementary or working with something is deliberately perhaps not putting itself at the center which mm. is really really interesting i mean that's just my um thinking about what you're saying and not really knowing very much of it but um but it, it seems to me like there's a there's some really interesting idea there that is isn't about what's in the center it's perhaps it's also something about what's alongside or around or yeah i i like the the way you're you're saying you're saying it because uh, actually in this performative mode of course it's more about collaboration than in the other of course and 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 this idea that we go inside in, around uh, this this voice uh, uh, it's that it's okay. I'm thinking a lot about and reading. I, I'm reading too about what kind of collaborations concepts are now in the in, in the uh, in the think people thinking about it and the the idea ideas as uh, distributed creativity. I don't know if of course no, uh, which is very interesting uh, way of of thinking it. Uh, something that is distributed between you and me and many others probably no? or or the ideas of uh, of artist artistic cycles uh, where where uh, many people could make part of it with different uh, kind of uh, agendas and agentic uh, forces um, and of course the the, the 
col collective creative uh, creation idea that comes more from theater with this idea of a uh, super mind yeah. which is above all of us uh, which is not the which is not the director neither mm -hmm. of course no and and i'm thinking about a lot about these different concepts and, and how i fit or i mean the work that i'm doing with uh, the artist fits in in this kind of concept or, or what kind of concept could we use yeah. uh, for for this kind of practices and and i know that many of you uh, have done this kind of things, of course, all the time. Many records, uh, I mean, Baquero, Gavins, Felipe, and, and many others have done many, a lot of collaborations in, and, and the idea of, of who, who is who there, it, it, it dwells like uh, in, in, in the sound. And I love that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's a super interesting topic, I think, myself. Um, but I just wondered what are the, how do you analyze actually a piece like Pia Summer's piece? What is your, your method to analyze this concrete piece? We, we just heard right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm analyzing um the the sound poems not not this uh not these results i don't i don't believe in in analyzing myself the the final outputs creative outputs of my research of my or my production in which i am involved i'm analyzing the inputs that i use as like, for instance, uh, a sound poem that already record Pia in some moment or Luis in other record. Okay, and for that, um, I'm using three approaches that I combine, which are uh, the uh, the interview with the discourse analysis of that, the um, with with the poet, of course, about the the vocal practice, um, the close listening that Bernstein talks about, like listening so many times, the the poem or all the or a, a big portion of of the work sound work of that poet, uh, until you can hear and have some conclusions about that vocal practice um and what i i'm calling now like a technology a technological assist uh close listening which is an uh, uses of some acoustic softwares mostly par uh, and uh, sony visualizer which are for uh, analysis of, of sound and I'm working with the concept of gesture. Uh, I'm I'm talking about the acoustical analysis precisely now, and I'm of course there are no words or syllables exactly, and then I I work in in terms of just gestures, which is energy or changes of energy, uh, and and I do a manual analysis, very long in some cases, uh, of counting and, and describing each, each gesture and making some kind of, of, of um, statistics about it, but not comparativist, like not for every sound poem with the same parameters, for example. I define these parameters after the close listening of it, after the, 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 the pure listening, of many times of, of that sound poems, I, I, I define what I, I will look for in the acoustics, not, not in the opposite way. Um, to for, and, and then you can, you can count, I don't know, how many unvoiced 
or whisper it if you want uh, gestures you have how how much fricatives how much i don't know you can define what what is important and and then you can look for it in more a quantitative way no? and and that kind i'm writing about it uh, precisely precisely now um about this kind of method but it, I, I i i believe in using this like scientific uh, method, but not in a in a scientific aim, which I call comparativist. No? But in in this creative, I I want ideas. I I want artistic ideas, not not conclusions about not only conclusions about the healthy voice of Luis or Bia, for for instance. Okay. Sorry for my long answer. <laughs> no, it's really interesting. Yeah, would love to see it when it's finished. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I hope it will be soon. It's a, it's a paper. Uh, so, um, I I can share with you something else if you want. To. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah. Joe. And and another this is with Luis in the in the context of uh, of my investigation, um, and um, Thank you. 
I have yeah. a question related to to this work, but also the the other one with the fear, because uh, yeah. well, you in, in your compositions, some of your compositions and also your performance, you like very much using the the looper, or mm. uh, not in these specific cases, but you 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 are working with very repetitive structures, and it's kind mm. of a drone. And I, I, I wanted to know in, in which way the, the, the choice of uh, putting a drone like an ambience or, or a background uh, is, is a way to put more in the front the voice or, or to propose a different kind of interaction than, for example, a song or, or a harmonic development that, that is more complex. I mean, you're, you are doing lots of things during this drone i mean it's growing and it's evolving but the, there's no no big changes in the harmony no that's right mm -hmm. um about the 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 looper i i'm now i'm more interested in in, in use it but 
like not not in a, in a, in in a square way hmm. like like there's this tendency in the loopers in the super loopers in the world to be like precise like yeah. to death like no like they are a, a metro metro man no hmm. uh, or met, met, metro woman or i don't know uh, there's a lot of people doing that hmm. and uh, well i'm not that good in that but also i'm i'm interested interested in in use it like like using it bad also hmm. uh, in, in in where 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 it it begins and ed, ends the loop mm. you, uh, tr try to dissolve that mm. also no and but of course the loop uh, like if um, takes you to this kind of monotony of course mm. and, and and this uh, and, and you can and you can't change it that easy. Mm. For instance, if you consider one harmony in the beginning, in, in the case of, of this last work with Luis, that's the case. You can hear that until the end. And uh, uh, unless that you want to be like really disruptive harmonically, mm. uh, you won't like uh, change it that much. Mm. You can put layers, of course. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. it, it's more like putting layers, but uh, not coincidental. Uh, it's not yeah. like uh, a bass and a drum and a guitar and a voice and a second voice. More in the song structure, it's more like layers. That yeah, and and I think that you, your question about this relationship mm -hmm. with voice is interesting because mm -hmm. there's there's something like. Something that the voice can can do also in drones mm, in, yeah. in, in this but but with the of course the problem of reading, which is at, 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 at least at, unless that you could do like a circle breathing yeah. uh, but I'm not that interested in extraordinary capacities of voice me neither I mean Luis and Pia they are great vocal performers. But they don't do like harmonic singing, cycling, uh, resp uh, respiratory, respiratory uh, cy uh, cycling, etc. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I I think that I I I look a lot this kind of confusion between sounds, mm -hmm. and 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 I think that in in some sense these kind of drones with details mm. um, dialogue well in some moments uh, with the with the voice with mm -hmm. these vocal practices particularly mm. not with every not with every vocal practice of course yeah. even 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 within the, even within or with uh, some poetry you know? mm. it's uh, could i ask I mean, you may have already answered this, uh, Federico, but um, the, the, the two examples that you just showed us, they were both terrific. I thought wonderful. Um, but the voice remained kind of unprocessed in both instances. And so, I mean, is that, and it only seemed that the, the instrumental was the, the process, that's where the processing was going on. Was there a sense that either Luis or Pierre didn't want their voice pr processed in that way, or is there a reason for keeping it kind of intact, if that's the right word? Yeah, Pia's is not that intact, but but a little bit. Okay. Yeah, and 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 Luis is more is more yeah uh, transparent in in this case. Um, there, I think that both of them they don't work with the, their voices uh, too. Uh, uh, process in general, uh, they they could they might answer uh, better than me. That, but in general, they w work with the, their voices like pretty simple in 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 sound processing. Um, but 
even in the in the electroacoustic interventions that I'm doing, uh, where I do some more process of uh, voice processing, I'm trying to look for the effects without using effects. Um, and probably the, these two examples are not the best cases, uh, but um, in the in the electroacoustic, I'm trying to put voices over voices, but without like uh, a, a great reverbs and and you know and delays and many other things. Uh, granulators and etc. I, I, I also use them, use them in some moments, but I'm trying to look for ways in which the voice without uh, leaving of, without uh, stop leaving, uh, stop being voices um, can make like wonderful things or, 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 or amazing things. Uh, like here, like there's a kind of effects or something like that. Uh, I don't know if I, 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 I'm answer you, uh, uh, respond. I, 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 mean, I, I, I wonder <laughs> if it was some kind of playing out of, of the kind of debate that happened in the UK between, oh. you know, Bob Cobbing and Ori Chopin. You know, the decision mm. whether or not to keep the voice. Maybe that's the wrong. But, or whether to pro pro process it in some way through some kind of technological means. But the voice itself is, of course, a kind of technology, and you could hear the kind of processing going on within what both Luis and he were doing. So um, yeah, I know the debate. Yeah, and I know. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, yeah, yeah. I, I know that uh, that Colvin was in the, in the in the way of not uh, of the pure and even not amplified voice in in many. Uh, venues, I think, no? no? Which is wonderful, too. No. Um, no. There's, there's that kind of division between um, like uh, some poetry and phonetic poetry, you know, with, with, without or with technology in a way, you know, or and in that those moments, I think you're, you're you put really close for a kind of like a electric poetry more than electronic in a way, and it's really wonderful. And like like bass uh, yeah. rhythms with voices is you know it's not much electronic; it's much electric. That is, that's really ah, I like I, 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 I like that. Yeah, yeah like the that same thing, really complex okay. but simple rhythm that is really is 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 like a sound uh, massage. You know, like here's mm. <laughs> here's <laughs> massage. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's um, cool. Yeah, I, I think, sorry, Luis, and uh, last thing. I think that the, 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 the division between phonetic and sound poetry is so, in this moment for us is only historical. I mean, uh, we take all that and, and put it in the, in the machine, I think. I don't know if you are agree with that. Yeah, yeah, but in a way, how to like, yeah, don't don't process it too much and feeling that kind of uh, simplicity rhythm of all the process itself uh, mm. and uh, just the technology when it, the technology transforms the product. You know that the the voice is not more like recognizable mm. like that. You know, it's just like other. Other space out outside of, of recognizable rhythm, you know. But yeah, yeah, really, really beautiful. I don't know if, what, if someone else want to make a, a question or something. Luis. Oh yes, uh, just the, uh, to let you know that uh, the piece is, is named the Discover of Fire, and uh, yeah. this is uh, an original visual poem from Clemente Padin from 1965. Uh, I, made, I made two or three versions of this point before this one. And in, in this case, uh, the improvisation that leads the voice 
uh, it comes from the sound of, of the bass that Federico was playing. And uh, the point uh, I, I want to uh, light is that for me, for me, for my experience, that became a kind of a ritual scenario for the boys. I could never repeat that version that makes it an entirely performance piece. And uh, uh, the, the trip, <laughs> the, the, the trip of the voice is like entering in a very pri primitive uh, uh, announce of the voice. I, I don't know uh, what I'm doing, um, I'm just uh, abandoning the, the 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 voice to its intuition to its uh, what what it leads from uh, 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 from somewhere that I I don't know what it is. So it's like a a trance. I think it's like a trance. It's, it's very different than the, any kind of, you know, musical interpretation uh, is, 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 a, is, a, is a trip of the voice. That's what I, I was trying to say. So were you working from memory from this poem? Obviously, you know the poem, you know the Padin poem well. I mean, how was that, how was that coming through in your performance? How were you, how were you remembering it? Um, obviously, you say it was kind of improvised, so not rehearsed in that sense. Uh, oh, I have, I have this text uh, in front of me. Was it, but it wasn't, but... was it there during the performance? I don't remember seeing it, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, no, but the okay. performance, all, all these, all these, you know, sounds or letters, whatever, uh, it became to, you know, to to change or or mm -hmm. or to to work in in, a, in another way. So this be, this became like a, a structure, but not not really a, a, a nothing more than that. I, I knew that I, I had to to go to the uh, world, fuego, fire, and all the all the journey to get there. It wasn't in, 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 in a full improvisation. Yeah, it was beautifully slow as well. That uh, yeah. you know, compared to the to the pier, which was very quick. You know, I thought that was uh, yeah, lovely. Here you are. Here you are, the, the original, I, I mean, uh, song poem of, of Luis in this uh, link. And, and this is like only boys. And, and it's pretty, pretty different. Uh, you can hear it later. Um, and it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And it's, it's, it's more like the poem. You can indeed, if you hear that, you can follow the, the, the phonetic poem, but uh, not that much in our version together, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jeff, is the in an uh, anecdotic, no, not yet. In, in an, an anecdotic thing, uh, the first time I I performed this poem was in 1989. And uh, was the first time I I staged on voice uh, a funny poem. So for me, is uh, is like a an starting point of getting into the phonetic poetry in my historical, you know, uh, per performance. <laughs> Yeah, and Jeff, uh, soon it will come out uh, a version of for a homage to Clemente Padin that is being prepared in Uruguay, 
uh, which is mostly texts, of course, but our contribution with Luis will be this version. Uh, I don't know. I think that only the audio. Yes, because, right now. because the, the angle of the video, it, it makes me awful. <laughs> Big and I hate it. I love that. So I, I, I'm not allowing. I love it too. To put but this video on. Luis, Luis is worried about. Wait. <laughs> Never do Luis doesn't like. It's like a koali singer, you know, you're kind of inhabiting like a, the space, like, like, like beer, this yeah. Fatty Ali Khan, you know. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. I, I wanted to uh, make you hear something more that is short too, if you want, if you are still with the... Okay, and, and then we can go to the improvisation. To the trip, yeah. yeah. And this is, this is um, our, a work that, uh, of uh, an appropriation work, uh, and I, I'll show you uh, this half um, uh, a script, a partitur, um, and it's going to be published soon, and it's called uh, Tareas Fonatorias. Oh, I have to share. Um, where, is, where are you? Where are you? Here. Um, Tareas Fonatorias, which is like uh, phonatory homeworks, like something like that for a therapy that I took, a phonatory therapy, therapy for teachers that I took. And, and they gave me these uh, notes, like instructions to do my homeworks in, in, at home, and many of them. And I took them and I composed this piece and nothing, then nothing that I, I put here is, my, is mine. I mean, this is all the letters of the uh, doctor and the assistants. Um, I only composed it with uh, this idea of four voices uh, and the, the background is, the, is Martin Gavin's uh, Cuadernos de Composición. Maybe some of you know, know that book. Uh, I, I took that too. Uh, and and you have a, a piece that you can uh, uh, you can perform uh, for four voices or eight voices I don't know or whatever um, and there's a lot of uh, signs that uh, the phonatories. Uh, therapies uses um, and some gestures, uh, phonic gestures. This is all about phonation. You have to use your glottis. Huh? Everything is about the healthy voice, but I, I, I use it, I twist that concept and not, not everything is healthy in this piece. This, um, well, it's kind of long. You it's go on and go on. Uh, then, then you have the M part, for example, for instance. All the M's are always healthy. Um, expressions, parts, and etc. cetera. Um, and um, this is going to be published as a book and, and, a, and a record and an album uh, with four different versions of the same piece, which is, I call it like a monography uh, record, a monographic uh, album. It's all, it's a version of myself alone. It's a version of Orquesta de Poetas with the uh, Coro Fonetico, which is uh, another group in Santiago uh, of uh, mostly, girls and women making voices, uh, marvelous uh, voices. And there's uh, another version also, and 
this version that I will show you, which is an improvisation of Luis and me, uh, like two or three months ago in Montevideo, with taking some parts of this uh, of this kind of poem or partitur uh, score for voices, and and nothing. I want to show you that. Give me a second. So. I put it. Um, oh, oh, this is complex in many things. Yeah, doesn't work, doesn't matter. Thank <laughs> you. 
De, de mate, sí. mate tarea fonatoria es mate. Wonderful collaboration between both of you, Luis and Federico. Great. Thank you. It's, uh, it's all Federico's fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's always. It's my fault, yeah. Yeah, it's all you. Uh, well. Okay, we have to we can go. three minutes to trans. <laughs> three minutes to trans. <laughs> All right. Or trans or two trans or in trans. Okay, I want to. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> what a group to improvise, huh? Yeah. <laughs> this is motivation, man. Yeah. Good night, friends. See you next Thanks, time. Thanks, Riz. <laughs> really, Riz made it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Thank speak you, against to this. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for hearing and sharing and asking. Thank you, Federico. Oh, th th thanks very much to you, Federico. It was great to uh, to know all what you're doing and and this blend between research and creativity and production and collaboration. And yes, I uh, am always amazed of all the things that you're doing and and also how much people integrate in all of that. Uh, he's very persuasive if, if you don't know him <laughs> personally. <laughs> <laughs> they say, they say that, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's great because uh, all this uh, leads to amazing results. So thank you very much, Federico. Thank you, Felipe, uh, Martin, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you, uh, next, week. See you next week. And right. next week, of course, we'll... Uh, yeah. It's nice. yeah and I, uh, we make a Facebook page and with all the videos inside. Yeah. Then you oh can, yeah. Like, uh, it, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's already. Well, it start to uh, to be ready. Like we have just put the first <laughs> five videos, then it will take like one week to have the other forty one. <laughs> <laughs> and for the next week, will be. You're like, unbelievable, ready. man. You're, you're unbelievable. just like uh, react to that and, and publish yeah. in your words, yeah. and you know, it's pretty, but put it down. Uh, people start to share it in the, in the in the group of WhatsApp. Yeah. Yeah, we'll put it, yeah, we'll put it later. Woo! <laughs> In a few. Thank you, Faye. Thank you, everyone. Oh, you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye. Dirk. Mr. Jeff. See you later. Yes. So, thanks, everyone. 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 Thanks, ever